The Emotion V13 is unlike any other electric unicycle I have ever ridden. Not only is it engineered, designed, and built to a level of standard we have not seen with any other EUC so far, it is also larger, more powerful, and have performances that are unimaginable by any EUC rider just a year ago. Back with the jump tower. Matter of fact, this is an electric unicycle with specifications more on par with something like an electric motorcycle. And all that in a package that is smaller than your average airline checking luggage. And this week, I'm going to ride the V13. And tell you why I think this wheel is going to redefine what it means to ride an electric unicycle. Roll the intro. First, a quick shout out to Jason at eWheel for sending me this demo V13 for review purposes. But as usual, my opinion is strictly my own. And don't forget to hit that like button and tell the Google algorithm that you want to see the EUC love spread far and wide. Now when I say the V13 specification is on par with electric motorcycles, I wasn't kidding. In a lineup of similarly priced lightweight electric motorcycle like the Surround X or the brand new Sonder Metacycle, this guy can totally hold its own. The V13 runs a custom built 3.5 kilowatt motor with a peak of 10 kilowatt output, two thirds that of the Sonder motor and a third more than the Surround X. The torque with the 126 volt electrical system is absolutely insane. At 220 foot pound, it's actually 70% more than the Sonder and like 700% more than the stock Sora. And no, with just a single wheel, that advantage in torque is not gonna translate directly to a proportional increase in acceleration, but it is still a bit mind boggling. Then we have wrench. The V13 carries a substantial 3 kilowatt hour worth of battery as compared to the 4 kilowatt hour on the Sonder and the 2 kilowatt hour on the Surround. And although consumption rate varies and are likely higher for the V13 due to its higher voltage, it is lighter and slower than the Sonder, so my guess is that you'll probably cover about the same distance. Then we have speed. The V13 has a cutout speed of 55 miles per hour as compared to the 70 on the Metacycle and 45 on the Surround X. And that's right, this is a unicycle that's actually capable of highway speed. All of that inside a 120 pound package with a 22 inch wheel. It is large for an electric unicycle, but small considering what it's capable of. I doubt you'll be able to walk down the frozen aisle of your local supermarket with anything remotely this powerful, but you can with the V13. The other thing you should know if you aren't already familiar with electric unicycle is that it takes a lot of skill to push and maintain control of a wheel Oops, this large and powerful. So unlike an electric motorcycle, it isn't just a matter of pinning the throttle until you max out the motor. With only a single wheel between you and the asphalt, 50 on the EUC honestly felt like about 100 on a motorcycle. So if your goal is to get some a heart pumping excitement then this will give it to you all right it's time to take the v13 out for a ride i got it velcroed padded up because i don't think i'm going to really have any luck with controlling this wheel without like speed pads on it you really have to lock in given the weight of this wheel on some smaller wheels i barely have enough room to put my pads and here it's like because of the size of this wheel almost look like they're floating <laughs> they're just so much room anyway let's get on this bad boy and see what it actually feels like all right <laughs> oh, this is a very different feeling wheel i actually haven't ridden my monster for a while and um it's interesting to go back to the 22 inch 
form factor. First of all, just so you know, um, it's 20 degree out. So not exactly ideal condition to be riding an electric unicycle. So the Sherman S is the same weight class as this wheel, but it has a very different feel. Um, similarly, uh, the Master Pro, which is also a suspension equipped 22 inch, 134 in that case, wheel that's probably the closest to this but also it doesn't feel like this i didn't feel the same sort of momentum that you typically get with a 22 inch wheel versus this i certainly do it's very kind of obvious so the more weight you have spinning the more centrifugal stability you have oh man it's so weird it really rides very different than anything else. It feels a lot stiffer compared to the Master Pro. With a 22 inch wheel, there should be a certain level of stability that you get from having a 22 inch wheel. I didn't really feel that with the Master Pro. You know, the wheel itself could be stable, but because the frame twists a little bit, you actually get this weird sense of instability. I don't think it's not maneuverable at lower speed. I think you just have to compensate. I think you have to crank a lot harder on this. Uh, the pad setup is super important. Oh uh, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can kind of feel what this wheel is all about. The important thing here is that it's very predictable. There's very, there's no flex, no flex at all. All right, let's give it a. Oh man, when you nudge it, it's weird. <laughs> it's very weird when you nudge it. 40 kilometer an hour and it feels like the wheel is just kind of waking up. So the other thing I noticed is that it's much thinner than the Master Pro. The Master Pro is huge. It feels really kind of chunky and get, like hits your knee all over the place. This wheel is like thin. Ergonomically, this is so much better. And with its weight, it definitely takes a lot more to actually brake. When you want to suddenly brake, it is takes a good bit of effort. And you can feel how tall the speed curve on this, even on a low speed, it just would pull and pull and pull. too bad i think i can deal with this oh i think i can deal with this the other thing i noticed was that my typical speed pad setup wasn't quite working and i'm not quite able to properly push the v13 as much as i like it's a good thing i have some friends from the north these are the north pad from a bunch of euc lovers up in montreal they are significantly deeper as compared to the Grizzilla means that I'll be able to lock my feet, lean harder, and they're also more modular, which means I'm able to spread them out a little bit to get better leverage. All right, this is significantly better. I went from not being able to really crank this wheel to now I feel like when I squat and nudge, I can overpower the motor. Helpful as well as slightly dangerous. But even with the perfect setup, it's still going to take you quite a bit to fully acclimate to this wheel. The V13 just rides really differently as compared to every single other electric unicycle I have ever ridden in the past. And for anyone who may not be familiar with an electric unicycle, you not so much as ride one, but sort of let it become a part of you. Because the UC lacked the dynamic stability of having a second wheel and the properly designed frame geometry, as you do on a motorcycle. As a matter of fact, the only other stability assistant you get a Aside from your own riding skill, that is, from the actual momentum of the wheel itself. This is why a larger diameter wheel is typically more stable. 19 inch being sort of the middle of the row average right now. 22 inch give you a bit more stability, but also raise the power requirement. The other factor of that formula is weight. The heavier spinning a mass, the more momentum it has. 
the more stable it is. And the V13 carries the heaviest motor ever paired to an electric unit cycle. And the momentum of the wheel is super obvious, especially at speed. Now I have been slowly pushing the wheel, ever edging faster and faster. And I can tell you that this is a wheel that just pull and pull and pull and never give up. It's like you're playing a game of chicken with the wheel. And so far, I've been the one who's losing on that. And I can simply sum up my first impression of the V13 with two words, and that is excitement and terror. And with that said, let's break and take a closer look at this crazy wheel. The Inmotion V13 is large compared to other electric unicycle at 30 inch tall by 20 inch deep. It's the same dimension as the average 29 inch rolling luggage and half the thickness. At 120 pounds, all that performance count at the price of motor and battery weight. Lifting it is possible thanks to these pretty well placed handles and a not quite well placed cutoff button. The bars do act as a serviceable kickstand, but I do wish that there were a more robust and convenient option built in. Carry it up and downstairs is possible, but certainly not pleasant. But with some practice, you can just roll it up, which is a lot easier. There is a color touch screen up top, which is the same as the one from V12 and remain one of the best control interface of any you see currently on the market. There's also a robust trolley handle, which make pushing the wheel around relatively easy to do. The decent tail light in the back and an insanely bright headlight up front. But the most revolutionary feature of the V13 is actually what is inside. Electrical system with thicker gauge wire and more robust redundancy than any other EUC ever built. Real battery management system with cells suspended in protective gel and in waterproof casing. Absolutely critical when it comes to the prevention of battery fire. The Emotion V13 is a wheel that redefined what is possible not only for an electric unicycle but also I think for future transport 55 miles per hour speed but in a package compact enough to fit comfortably underneath your work desk An all of it wrap inside one of the most visually impressive package I have ever saw. This is a wheel that will turn heads wherever you go. But with any highs, there are also lows, which bring us to the V13's other headline feature, its suspension. And to do that, let's find ourselves a set of stairs. Ooh. The V13 suspension consists of a pair of air shock on both sides of the wheel, essentially doubling up the design they had utilized for the V11, which means that it shared many of the positive and negative side of that design. It is relatively maintained free. I've been riding my V11 for the last year and a half with nothing more than the occasional re-pumping up of the shock. It also has a pretty thin profile, which is part of the reason reason why Motion is able to make the V13 as thin as it is. And it is also bouncy, not as smooth or customizable as compared to the shock design from the other manufacturers like the Kingsung S22 are the hydraulic shocks on the Sherman S. Stiff enough so as to not bond out at the bottom of a long run of stairs the problem you get with the master pro oh my god and the overall weight and rigidity of the wheel does smooth out the ride somewhat it is an improvement when it comes to the v11 suspension but considering that wheel has sort of the least performance of the gen 1 suspension design it's not saying much now because of a broken rebound valve stand i wasn't able to customize the shock performances as much as I like, and I expect improved performances with a working setup, but the fundamental limitation of the V13 shock design means that it will likely never be able to compete with the other wheels with more modern shock design like the Master or the S22. But is it good enough for off-road? Well, let's find out.
Okay, this is oh, not an easy thing to do. <laughs> there is a lot of weight you have to maneuver. The V13 definitely have the torque. If you're able to maintain your balance and crank it, it'll take you up steep hills. I was actually kind of surprised by how steep of a hill it was able to climb. The stock tire is kind of slippery. If you aspire to off-road riding, more than likely you're going to have to find a different tire. If you were to drop down a steep, rocky slope, you can't do okay. The fact that this is a 22 inch wheel also make that an easier task. If your off-road ride is about speed and power, then you would likely be very happy with the V13. However, if your ride consists of more technical downslope section where agility is required, then this is not an easy wheel to maneuver yourself. <laughs> you know, this is like a very steep slope and I'm able to crank up it, no problem. Here's where that 126 volt system really comes into play. Oh. Definitely need more practice here. If I'm able to pivot a wheel a few more times, probably okay. Also, I'm on 40% battery. I've been riding all day. So both me as well as the V13 is a little bit out of gas. This does actually work quite a bit better than I expected because I've tried taking my monster off-road. It's not fun. That wheel just doesn't have enough torque. If dirt is what you like, they are probably better choices than this 120 pound beast. It's workable, but it's work versus a lighter suspension wheel like the T4, for instance, make this feel a lot more effortless. The other thing you may have caught was that the V13 was down to 40% battery halfway into my ride and range is unfortunately the other sacrifices you have to make. It is a problem common with all other high voltage wheels. With all of their power gain comes reduced efficiencies, especially if you ride fast. By the time I got home that night after a 20 miles ride, I would have less than 6% battery left. Now it does come with a 5M charger instead of the typical 3 and will fully recharge an empty pack in 6 hours. R3 if you plug in a second charger. So at least you don't have to wait too long for a fill up if you're running empty. But come on, neither off road nor long distances are the reason why you would want the V13. The reason you would is because it can do this. And now it's time to properly push the V13 and see what it can do. We'll have to leave the city since there's just not enough room with the traffic and everything for the V13 to properly stretch its leg. So first I've been riding extensively in all kind of condition. Just yesterday I had to make a 30 miles trip in the rain. The V13 held up well. As a matter of fact, if I had to choose for that trip specifically, there's probably no better wheel because that was also out in Queen where the traffic tend to be faster and on the larger roads people drive fast nobody follows the 35 miles per hour speed limit where there's no traffic and to keep up you really have to push the wheel up to 45 miles per hour on a pretty regular basis and for a 19 inch wheel like the Sherman S that kind of speed is really well past your comfort zone and now that we're in Queens the roads open up the speed increases and even though the ground is still wet from yesterday, it feels much more comfortable. There is a, a bit more anticipation required because of the additional distance that this wheel required to break, but that's firmware related. And that is one area that I can't really speak to. And 
is actually hugely important because the firmware determines the amount of acceleration, the power consumption, range and all of that. And really it's a huge part of what a wheel actually feel like to ride. For example, the Kingsol S22 felt a bit sluggish when I first rode it at the demo stage. But when I recently rode it as part of a comparison between it and the Sherman S as well as the Master, it felt so much lighter, quicker, and the reason why is that Kingsol made improvements to the firmware as time goes on. And yes, you do sacrifice some agility and the braking distance isn't great, but overall, for something like this, there's just nothing better. Not just having that crazy top speed, but also knowing that above that top speed, you have so much headroom. I mean, this wheel have like an 80 miles per hour free spin. So even at 55, you're like well within the safety zones. And even though a wheel like the Master Pro is technically capable of faster speed, at least for me, I didn't feel comfortable riding that wheel at that type of speed. It is much more stable and safe and secure to ride the V13. And that is really the one area the V13 absolutely excel in more so than any other electric unicycle available. The Sherman S may have better suspension and the Master Pro may be capable of higher top speed, but the V13 is the only EUC available right now where such insane speed is actually attainable for sensible riders under less than ideal condition while still maintaining sufficient amount of headroom and safety margin. speed riding like this on an electric unicycle above 45 still feels scary and exciting at the same time it's just that it doesn't feel as much like a suicidal run as it does of the master pro on long stretch of straight run like this i always get a little bit worried you just are tempted to speed up and keep up with traffic while everyone is driving faster you end up getting really close to the cutout condition on uh, let's say a bagot wheel without realizing it why we call it the cutout tunnel the cutout tunnel because it's straight and featureless so you'd be doing 50 without even realizing it and that is kind of the surprising impression of this wheel as insane as its specification and capability are it doesn't feel crazy when you're doing this. It feels planted, stable, and reasonable. Which to my speed addicted mind is like the perfect justification for keep pushing for ever greater top speed. And it's really built for this kind of condition. I haven't maxed out the V13 just yet and every time I ride it, I couldn't help but think, well, would today finally be the day that I hit 55 miles per hour on an electric unicycle? I don't know, let's see. So here's the thing. If you think of the Emotion V13 as a compact electric motorcycle that just have a single wheel, then it all makes a lot more sense. It offers a combination of performance, stability, safety, and convenience that you won't find with any other EVs available on the market. And it is faster compared to any other EUCs, not just on the very top end, but also on average. On longer trip, I noticed I was shaving about 20% off of my travel time 
length. And if you actually commute with your wheel regularly, that makes a pretty decent differences. And now the V13 isn't as fast as the Sonder Metacycle, but for a local road, which is what lightweight EVs are intended for anyway, you will rarely, if ever, utilize that 70 miles per hour top speed. And unlike the Metacycle or any other e-bike for that matter, you never have to worry about parking or theft since you can just have the wheel with you at all times. But the practical reason really is only a small part of why I love the Emotion V13. It is a deeply aspirational product for Emotion, not only for themselves, but also where they think the EUC world is moving towards. This is a wheel that no one think could exist, built by a company that no one think would ever attempt such a challenge, and they not only made it real, but built it on their own terms. And I will quote the little girl in the blue frilly dress on the F train this morning, wow, it is really cool. So what do you think? Is Emotion V13 the EUC we all have been waiting for that not only gave us the performance we crave, but finally addressed all the build and safety concerns? Or is it too large, too heavy, and too damn expensive? Well, that is what the comment section below is for. And you know what? Aha! I somehow managed to trick you into wasting another, oh my god, 25 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friends, teach them how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.